you're listening to the word on Ujima 98 FM. Good afternoon. How are you this week? This week on the show, we are going to talk about organic food. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had the founder of VegFest um, in the studio, Tim Barford, and he has been organising events all around the country um, promoting vegan food. And it was really interesting to talk to him and, you know, find out exactly how accessible becoming a vegan is, because it's one of those things we think, oh God, it's just going to be too much like hard work. It's going to cost too much money, which is what a lot of people I've been speaking to this week feel about organic food. You know, is it accessible? Is it affordable? And is it the way forward? Now, from speaking to a lot of people, I've been uh, getting yes to all of those answers. But joining me in the studio today, I have Rachel Parks from the Organic Trade Board, Lucy Gatwood, who is uh, from one of the biggest retailers of organic food in the area, Better Food, and Dr. Angela Raffle, who is one of the founding uh, founders of the uh, community farm in Chew Magna and also a doctor as well. Welcome guys, thanks for coming to the show. Hello. Hi, really there. appreciate you all coming in. Now I think we'll start with Rachel at the beginning here because next week we've got an event um, promoting organic food and you're actually from Organic Trade Board, is that correct? That is correct. What yeah. is an Organic Trade Board for a start? So Organic Trade Board, we um, represent about 70% of the organic market. Um, So we have around 150 members, which include retailers such as Better Food, um, farmers, and also brands such as Yo Valley. And so we are the voice of the organic market, really. Right, okay. And is this something that you wholeheartedly believe in, or is just a job opportunity? No, no, I completely believe in organic food. I think, um, you know, it's healthy for us as well as better for the environment and I think this day next Wednesday is a brilliant way to celebrate organic food. What I want to know is why is it better for us? Um, Well there's three reasons really why we say it could be better for us. First of all um, well it's tasty and delicious (laughs) Um, and it includes less um, antibiotics as um, through organic farming they don't use or they use fewer antibiotics than non-organic farming. Um, It's also got higher animal welfare, so the animals are happier um, and there's fewer antibiotics given to them. There are lots of medical reasons, which maybe Angela uh, in a minute can perhaps explain, because it worries me about what is in our everyday food, our non-organic food, and how that's affecting our children and our health long term. So perhaps we can talk about that in a moment. We've also got Lucy Gatwood, who's um, in the studio today, from a lot of people in Bristol will know and heard of Better Food. Um, I understand you're going to celebrate your 25th birthday soon. We are. We're really excited. This year is our 25th anniversary, which is quite a milestone in organic farming. When you think the organic farming has the Soil Association, which is the guardian of the organic standard, has been going for 75 years, which is another major uh, celebration this year. And organic retailing at, at the scale that we do it is really uh, quite phenomenal and we're really proud and we're really proud that it's in Bristol and our founder and the still the business owner Phil Horton is my complete organic food hero he's fantastic that's amazing I remember when you started up and that's I amazing. used to get one of your veg boxes yeah, not one delivered. of my veg boxes one of well, Phil's veg boxes one of Phil's yeah. yes one yeah. of Better Foods yeah. veg boxes delivered every mm-hmm. week and that kind of brings me on to something about how that made it easy for me Yep. You know, it was cheap, it was reliable, and, you know, I got a great selection of delicious and tasty food. And Because one of the other things, I, I knew some friends had an organic farm, one of the first organic farms mm. near Stroud. And I remember having a strawberry that they'd grown, and it literally took me back to my childhood. Doesn't and I was it? like, yeah. oh my days, that's mm. what a strawberry is supposed to taste like. But you forget, don't you? You forget what fruit and vegetables are supposed to Mm. taste like when they're pumped full of whatever it is we're full of which maybe could lead me on to Angela Raffle Dr Angela Raffle who's with us today Um, what are the sort of things that we're finding in our food in our non-organic food the biggest difference is that organically grown food and it's important to remember that organic is as old as the hills organic isn't new it's the original way isn't it it's the original way and in recent decades Farming has gone completely industrialised and everything's... I was talking to a farmer the other week in Wales and he said, when I realised I was spraying stuff to make it start growing and spraying stuff to make it stop growing and all I was doing was spraying, I thought, what on earth am I doing? And I think a lot of farmers are beginning to ask those questions. So from the point of view of how, how good it is for us when we consume it, it's the pesticides, the heavy metals, the antibiotics... 
that you know you're not getting if you choose old as the hills food, but you are getting if you choose uh, stuff that's been produced with all those artificial methods. But the big thing is what it's doing to the natural world. So 69% of land in England is farmland. We can support as many wildlife projects as we like. And unless we change the way we farm, we'll lose all our farmland bird species. We'll lose all those little micro beasts. And we'll lose the, soil of th- the health of the soil. And also our health. You know, our own health and the health of the planet. I mean, they're completely interlinked. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's your involvement with um, Wake Up to Organic? Well, the in, I mean, one interesting thing for me is when I was at school in the 1960s and 70s, there was, we all cared about the environment. There'd just been Silent Spring published. We'd just seen those first pictures of Earth from space. Really? And everybody cared. And it was that term, environmentalist, was actually carefully invented by, you know, the industries that wanted to carry on trashing the place to marginalise people who cared. And... For me, without realising it, as a busy working doctor with four little children, I'd switched completely to the fortnightly supermarket shop. And it wasn't until activists in Bristol kind of woke me up. I think there was a little challenge, probably heard about it through Better Food, saying, could you manage for a week without packaged and only stuff wow. with, produced within 100 miles? And so as a family, we said, wow, I wonder if we could do that. So we did it with the kids. You're listening to The Word on Ujima 98 FM. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Uh, joining me in the studio tonight, I've got three incredible guests who are representing the Wake Up to Organic, which are events taking place in Bristol um, next Wednesday on the 14th of June. It's a nationwide celebration of organic food. Um, now, Rachel Parks here is um, from the Organic Trade Board. What do you think is one bit of advice you could give to somebody listening today? if they were interested in in going organic what would be your key tip i think the one thing they should do is next wednesday pop down to your local independent store um this could be matter whole foods scoop away harvest better food in bristol all of them are hosting wake up to organic events and it's a real chance for them to learn about local organic food try and find out how simple and easy it is to make the switch to organic and how delicious it is as well you know what i didn't realize was just quite how many organic stores there are um in bristol obviously i've I've known about better food for 25 years so that's kind of always been my go-to place um how and i don't live in bristol anymore how do i find out about if there's a local store near me so if you want to find out where you can get an um, event for Better Foods, I mean for Wake Up to Organic, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you can go to um, www.wakeuptoorganic.co.uk, simply type in your pass- um, postcode <laughs> and uh, you can find out where your local stores, stores are to pick up a free organic mini breakfast. Oh, that's great. So so is this just happening next Wednesday or is it over a pe- period of time? No, it's the, in, the, in its third year running and right. it's every year on Wednesday the 14th. Um, and it's just for the morning and all of the local stores get involved and we're handing out over the whole of the UK over 10,000 free organic breakfasts. So that's amazing. So if you want a free breakfast next week, make sure you find out where your nearest organic store is and go and check it out. And also, I think I'm talking to um, Dr. Angela Raffle, she was saying about how just taking little steps uh, can be the way forward. Why would you suggest worth starting off with breakfast? Because they're offering you a free mini breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) Duh. (laughs) It's it's a great place to start because there's less cooking. There's less difficult preparation and recipes that you might not be familiar with. And, I mean, this is... It's worth pointing out that sales of organic food in England have gone up five years in a row. Wow. Because people care. And I think yeah. it's because they care about the natural world as well as caring about their own health. But it's very hard to make a big change all in one go. So just go for a small change. I mean, my original challenge was just do it for a week. Just go into one of these stores because you might not have been in one of them before. And they're full of nice, friendly people and uh, products that you will recognise. Yeah, what I found really interesting as well is when we were talking about off mic, how you were saying that organic is the original way. You know, it's not something new. It's how we used to live. And Mm. it's only sort of in, you know, the more recent decades that farmers have looked at, you know, how they can increase yields of crops or 
pesticides and uh well you were saying one farmer in particular was finding it very hard um and and find that that, that he was just sort of spraying stuff to grow crops yes yes and uh, and there was another i mean there was a farmer who spoke at the ox there's this wonderful conference in oxford every january called the oxford wheel farming conference and it's absolutely buzzy about 600 people and there was a farmer who'd farmed all his life and he was also a wildlife photographer and when he was about 50 10 years ago he suddenly realized why am i going to romania to do my wildlife photography because there's no wildlife on my farm oh my gosh so he spent 10 years really finding out how to change his farm and now he has wildlife walks on his farm and it's absolutely buzzing and he finished his talk by saying however frustrated we might feel with the political system every day we have three votes for the kind of food and farming system we want and so the first step is just look at what you're eating and I mean as a public health doctor I'd say eating less horribly over-processed, high-fat, high-sugar, high-salt, packaged junk. That's the biggest change you can make for your health. Cook from scratch at least once a week with fresh ingredients. Um, and I'd say come out to the community farm for a day because we welcome people on the land. I'd love we to hear a bit more about this. So we, with, with the community farm is where? It's, it's out in the Chew Valley. Okay. So as long as you've promised to go to one of Rachel's Wake Up Organic events, <laughs> um, the next step you can do is look on the website, the community farm. And actually, we supply organic fruit and veg to Better Food Company. Uh, well, this is something I wanted to ask was then, yeah. where does the products come from? So your farm, it, how big is it? We grow on about 15 acres. We've got four polytunnels. And we have these wonderful community farmer Saturdays. We pick up in a minibus from Temple Mead Station. It's free and people have the best day. They say, you should, you should, how can this be free? You know, they have such fun and they all, we have soup and bread and cheese in the yurt. So you take time. people from Bristol to the farm for yeah, free yeah. and they can spend a day on the farm. Yeah. Now that sounds amazing. Yeah. So again, if people want to hear about that, what's, how do they find out? Just what's go on the community farm website. At and we, we also do okay. veg boxes very affordable veg boxes that we deliver to your door. Okay. And we have weekly volunteering, we have kids' activities. That's but, amazing. But I think for, for a lot of people, the food and farming thing is so, it's such a complex field and there's so many people telling you, no, that's bad for you, no, that's the wrong yeah. thing to do. And everybody makes you feel guilty, which is terrible, don't feel guilty. Just come to the farm and then that just starts to make you think, actually, food and farming isn't that scary after all. Yeah, thank you, Angela. Um, Rachel, um, you have been part of the Organic Trade Board for how long? When did you get involved? You seem very young. Is this something I, that you're very passionate about? I've been working with the Organic Trade Board, yeah, only for about six months, personally. Right, okay. But the Organic Trade Board has been around since 2009. Oh, okay. And Better Food, of course, have been around for 25 years. Yeah. But when did you get involved with them, Lucy? Were you right at back at the beginning? Or? With the Organic Trade Board? Well, no, with, with Better Food. When I, oh, I've been with Better Food on and off for 10 years. I started, oh, really? No, actually longer than that um when my children were babies i've got 15 year old twins i hope they're not listening <laughs> oh, uh, <thanks. laughs> they were premature and very and my daughter in particular was very difficult to feed so i found better food because i was looking for really nutritious food oh. because i realized that every mouthful that went into her, her body had to be of the absolute best okay. quality because she was she didn't eat very much I understand. and from there i went on to helping them with their website in return for boxes of veg and then I think I got drunk at an office party and said, I really want to come work for you. <laughs> and Phil said, come and talk to me about it on Monday or something like that. And yeah. then I started a sort of very low level marketing, bits of marketing work. And I've been there. I had a bit of a sabbatical at the Soil Association for a couple of years, which was fantastic. And I've been there on and off for 13 years, something like that. That's incredible. So, uh, yeah, it's part of my life, big part of my life. Yeah. So better food um, has had quite an important impact on the people in Bristol. I mean, for myself alone, you know, just having that opportunity of having a, a veg box delivered. Do you still do those? We don't because, interestingly, back to Angela, we, uh, Better Food, used to, in a different incarnation, the community farm was part of Better Food, but it wasn't called the community farm at the time. It was part of our wholesale operation. Uh -huh. And then through a series of... Um, so Phil, Phil Horton, who founded Better Food, is a, is a co-founder of the community farm and he's oh, still really? on our board and so essentially yeah. the the what was our whole scheme our wholesale and box scheme 
became the community farm and our relationship with the community farm is still really really important to both organizations yeah, well, we, of we offer a, yeah. a major route to market for the community farm is it hard to find organic suppliers in the country it's is it getting easier and one yeah. of the reasons it's getting easier is because of people like better uh, organizations like better food which supply a, a stable route to market so i think we yeah. see our place not only to supply food to our customers but also to help um burgeoning entrepreneurial businesses find a stable route to market so that they can trust and that's uh communicative and give, you know we give our our small suppliers lots of feedback to help them grow and become sustainable businesses it's all about having a a, a business model that works and has some traction well, this is it and it's talking to the farmers isn't it and getting them to yeah. realize what what way forward because so many of them are trying to find different ways to make money mm. but then as a farmer isn't it quite hard then you can't just suddenly decide to be organic can mm. you surely there's a process to getting your there soil is. yeah there is. it's quite a long-term process that's um the biggest certification body in in the uk is the soil association who are over there but <laughs> Half, no, not even quarter of a mile from where we are. Yeah. And uh, but there are other certification bodies that do a similar thing, which operate to very high standards, which are to do with the quality of the soil. And, Absolutely, and, and having the, no chemicals on yeah, it. Yeah, and for the levels of, of time. animal yeah. husbandry and of course, lots of, of things course. like that. Yeah. I mean, that's something we haven't touched on at all. Is the sort of the meat side of mm. organic food? It isn't all about being vegetarian, is it? No. Um, so we're going to take a bit of a break, and then we'll come back and have a, a last little chat about um, wake up to organic. Thanks, ladies. We'll be back shortly. You're listening to The Word on YouTube. Box. Joining me in the studio today, um, I've got three oh, wonderful young ladies. Uh, Rachel Parks from the Organic Trade Board, Lucy Gatwood from uh, the amazing retailer Better Food, and Dr. Angela Raffle, who's one of the founding members of the Community Farm in Chew Magna. Now, we're talking about organic food, and um, uh, a day next week, Wednesday the 14th of June, it's a nationwide event to celebrate organic food, and various organic suppliers are um, giving away free breakfast so it's like a free mini breakfast to just kind of give you a little taste a little introduction to organic food and uh, what it can taste like and just a little way you can maybe change your lifestyle off mic Angela we were just talking about and um, Lucy what we were talking about was how the farmers participate in this and and how we've kind of got to this situation of huge farms with huge crops Um, you know how have we ended up in this situation it's, sorry. That's a big question. Oh, that's a big question. Sorry. <laughs> and one of the reasons is that w- we've allowed food to just become a commodity. Right. So it's just seen as something that, I mean, people speculate on food futures and that drives the prices all haywire. And the, the big multinational supermarket chains really have restricted any link between the farmer and the consumer. There's 110 buying desks that control all the produce coming from three million farms and connecting with hundreds of million consumers. And so all these projects that we're talking about this morning are actually creating different routes so that farmers then can do the changes that their heart is telling them they have to do for the future because the industrialised agriculture system is going to take us to a really bad place. How how did we end up in this place of this huge industrialised farming? I think... I think it mostly happened post-war. I think after right. the war, there was a big drive to get people's nutrition back up. Uh, you know, oh, really? Were quite, uh, and and also to just think of um, feeding feeding masses of people quickly uh, in a, in a different world. It was just it opened up a different time, and um, what happened is that you end up with these enormous fields on enormous farms that just produce one crop that over time depletes the soil and which relies more and more on petrochemicals and fertilizers and so you lose all the diversity and you lose a lot of wisdom about how to farm without petrochemicals propping you up whereas organic farms tend to be collectives of uh, lots of different activities so you have an awful lot of wisdom in one really well-run organic farm you have animal husbandry and land management and crop rotation and it's a really beautiful system actually uh, and and it also encourages biodiversity and you, know, you have more bees, you have more pollinating plants. It's just everything about it is actually much more sustainable and much more um, has much more impact on everybody who's involved in the process. It's a it's a really sort of heart filled process. It really is from beginning to end, from yeah. from you know the farmer to consumer. It really yeah. is something that you know is very heartfelt, isn't it? And 
Um, and it creates much more jobs as well, much, much more, more really, really meaningful livelihoods yeah, right. and yeah. in rural areas. So as a farmer, what kind of encouragements are the government giving you to become organic, or aren't they? I think it's fair to say that they're not. No, it's um, not something they're We were just discussing in the, when the music was playing about how it works in other countries, yeah. other yeah. European countries, where there's much more investment in organic farming, particularly in Northern Europe, and we sadly don't have that in this country. And that's one of the reasons why organic food tends to be more expensive, because it's something that farmers have to do on top. They have to pay to, to go through the process. Whereas in other countries like Denmark, particularly, which yeah. the Organic Trade Board are, are partnered with, um, you, organic farming is just a thing that you can be, you can be you know, there's investment there for you to. So to do sorry, it. why why would a farmer have to pay to go organic? Because of the certification process. To prove uh -huh. that you're organic, you have to. There's a whole load of criteria that you have sure. to meet, and it's really important that you do meet those criteria in order for it to be different. Because yeah. otherwise, you can, you know, it's like you bandy words around like natural or. Um, uh, healthy they don't actually mean sure but if there's leftover really pesticides or chemicals yes. in the soil then so that the can't so, yeah. so certification makes sure that you can absolutely robustly completely guarantee that there are no GM crops anywhere near anything that you're producing there's no pesticides or there are pesticides allowed but they're, they're used in very specific contexts can I just ask you to clarify for our listeners what exactly you mean by GM crops uh, genetically modified yeah um, it's not my area it's probably Angela knows probably more about this than I do but it's uh a very contentious subject well yes no it is Angela what would you to a listener out there who perhaps doesn't even know what GM crops are how would you explain it because it's a really important subject isn't it's, it it's a really important subject and it's one that fraught, is fraught with a lot of very misleading arguments exactly. and a lot of emotions and one of the, one of the real worries about uh, biotech doing genetic modification is that you end up with maybe 10 companies in the world that are the only people who have the patents on the seeds and then they start to take farmers to court for trying to seed save all kinds of things which are no-brainers that humans should be allowed to control their land and grow crops that they've depended on for generations and generations and then these big companies like Monsanto come in and take the rug from under their feet by saying we've got the property rights on these seeds and you have to have to buy them from us um, so there's all kinds of concerns about genetic modification but that would be the one I'd put number one and Soil Association has some really good reports of trying to demystify a lot of the PR propaganda that gets put out about them so if I wanted to try and avoid eating anything that was GMO GM produced how would I go about that the only way you can do it is to eat organic now, yeah. sadly. Uh, that's only true fairly recently, but it's filtered down through the food chain yeah. to that degree. Yeah. How important do you think it is to our health to not eat GM crops? Again, Angela. That's such a hard question to answer because to do those kind of studies on hundreds of thousands of people would be very hard. Right. For me, it's about I don't want to be complicit in a system that is causing Indian farmers to all commit suicide. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So the reason why we've come here today is celebrating organic um, food, Wake Up to Organic, which is a nationwide event taking place next Wednesday. Um, Rachel's here from the Organic Trade Board. Um, now, you have, uh, did you say this is like the third year it's happened? This is the third year, yeah, and it's tripled in size from last year as well. Really? Yes. So, so if people want to get involved on Twitter or anything like that, can they? Yeah, so we would love to hear about people's stories in the morning, um, if you want to cook your own organic recipe, or if it's even you know organic bowl of cereal please take a photo and share it on twitter um or on facebook with the hashtag wake up to organic cool you know the one thing we haven't really touched on as well is about organic meat because it isn't it isn't just about being vegetarian and Not being vegan is it no you know so i mean do, do you, does better food sell organic meat as we, well yes we yeah. do and why is it so expensive because again it's uh, because it's not intensively farmed, yeah, it costs of more. Course. Um, yeah. Because, but you can guarantee that what you're eating is of really good quality, has been really well cared for. But you won't find any traces of um, hormones or antibiotics, and uh, it also is probably part of a movement where we're probably encouraged to eat less meat, but really good quality meat. So although it's expensive, you don't actually, we don't actually need to eat meat to have, eat meat every day. Oh, no, exactly. But eating a bit of good quality meat is is 
you know, that's and it cool. is, it's it's also that. it's worth pointing out there was a really important study published in the British Medical Journal just a few weeks ago showing that we eat ten times as much meat yeah. as we're really evolved to need and that eating that much meat particularly red meat, is associated with really poor health. So we need to think of meat as a, as a small, precious ingredient. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And also, uh, what I notice about when you have organic meat, it goes back to the eating the first organic strawberry. You know, it just <laughs> reminds me, of, oh, that's what meat should taste like. Mm-hmm. And it really is um, quite an incredible experience. So, you know, it's that choice, isn't it? I suppose it is a lifestyle choice. Um, and I, I hope our listeners have gained something from the conversations today. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else that we need to tell our lovely listeners? Before that we list of stores that again, that I think, yeah, Rachel. Just yeah, just pop, pop down to your local store. Um, we've got Better Food, Matter Whole Foods, Scoop Away Health, Harvest, The Bear Pit Social, Earthbound, Wild Oats, Folk House Cafe on Park Street, Arch House Deli and Spike Island. Um, and you can find them all at www.wakeuptoorganic.co.uk. And for somebody like me who perhaps isn't living in central Bristol, I can go onto the website, put in my postcode and yep. find out my nearest retailer. Is that right? Yes, that is true. Yeah, no, that's wicked. That's great. Well, good luck with the event next Wednesday. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That sounds really exciting. Save me a breakfast. <laughs> Come on down. I will be there. <laughs> you can guarantee that I will be there for my free brekkie. Angela, best of luck with the farm and Thank everything you. that it sounds like an amazing um, project I'm really excited it's been going for six years did you say well it took us about 18 months of arguing about how on earth we were going to make it work <laughs> and then we became legal April 2011 and each year we get a little bit stronger well that's amazing best of luck with thank any you. future projects thank you so much for coming in and then of course lucy gatwood from better foods my old friends better foods oh, yes. yeah no you've been around for a long time and long may you reign absolutely i second that yeah thank you so much for coming in ladies have a good weekend you. you're listening to the word on ujima 98 fm